Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today, we're taking a look at the legendary 9BOT Z10. So, let me tell you more about it. Wrong Way. Okay, listen guys, huge thanks to myewheel.com for providing me this wheel for testing purposes. And today we're going to do a riding review, sort of. We'll just be riding and talking about the wheel. And believe it or not, I already reviewed a Z10 before in, uh, in Polish. I had the wheel for a while. So now I've done, I don't know, maybe 50 kilometers on it again. And I gotta tell you that you don't forget how a 9 bot Z10 looks like and there's a lot of aspects about this wheel so let's just dive into it so the z10 is already um, a pretty old wheel it came out i don't know a couple years ago i can show the date exactly on screen right now uh, but you can tell it is not the newest generation of wheels it's the flagship or was the flagship by ninebot with a around thousand watt hour battery so range of like 50 60 kilometers um, a pretty powerful motor and a 18 inch wheel with a four inch wide tire. So really, really wide tire. And this is what makes the 9BOT Z10 unique. And I'll talk about it more when we talk about the ride, but this tire, this wide beast of a tire, 18 by four inches, which is a tubeless tire and a low profile tire is one of a kind in an electric unicycle world. It has just a single charge port, uh, not a fast charging time, I think around like 10 hours, probably something like that. And the, the charge port is also proprietary, so it's very difficult to get a fast charger for it. Uh, it does front lights, which are pretty similar to what the Emotion V10 offers, and also a daytime running light. And now that I think of it, could it be that the 9BOT Z10 had the first uh, daytime running light? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> the rear tail light is really bright and well visible and the front light is, you know, as said, pretty, pretty me mediocre. It has a lift switch, but the lift switch works different than in all wheels. There's no lift button. The software just recognizes that you are trying to lift the wheel. It also makes these awesome sounds. Like here, here are all the sounds that the 9BOT Z10 makes, uh, you know, startup noise, uh, all the lift switch noises and, and all that so it sounds just great take a listen it also has this awesome rgb lighting you can also set up different presets looks really cool and all in all the design of the z10 is amazing i mean just the looks of it is incredible. It's sort of like the electric unicycle Batman would take when he goes out of his tr tumbler. <laughs> the pedals are quite wide, but also not that long. So in comparison to today's wheels, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's the most comfortable setting. Definitely one more thing is that the pedals are really flat. So it's not so easy to stay on the wheel. And they're also uh, very low to the ground, which provides a great sense of stability. And this wheel, when you're riding slow, let me just show you real quick, is amazing. It's like the sturdiest wheel to go slow and to try tricks, go backwards, turn around. 
it's like the best wheel literally for going slow even though it's an 18 inch wheel at slow speeds it's as nimble as a m10 free i would say it's amazing but if you go faster the ride changes drastically but anyways it also has a trolley handle which i'll show you in in the b-roll it i wouldn't say it's the most sturdy trolley handle but it it's at a nice height and because of the different riding characteristics of the 91 z10 it's actually really nice to trolley the Z10 around, uh, just push the wheel around in a store. It also has a small button here on the top to turn on and off the wheel and it's a short press for turn on and off and long press for the lights so just like emotion, not my favorite setting, should be the other way around. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> and as you can tell the uh, ride quality <laughs> is not the best. <laughs> All right guys, so the Z10 has also a long history of um, like serviceability issues so i think in the states there were problems with uh, servicing this wheel and definitely check out the video by sean um he made many reviews of the z10 and he had it in new york city it was his fav favorite wheel for a while so check out his videos which are more in depth in this uh, regard but the z10 had many sorry had many dead on arrival um, units because they were stored in storage facilities for too long and the Z10 has a lot of phantom battery drain so the BMS uses a lot of power uh, from uh, from the battery system even if the battery is not uh, used for for riding so there was a lot of dead on arrival wheels which were pretty tricky to service and also if you would do a pendulum on the Z10 it could fry or if you just start it uh, when going uphill this wheel is definitely not designed for you know hard hill climbing it's possible to climb hills on it but i wouldn't definitely recommend doing that the z10 body also had a smaller uh, battery capacity sibling the z6 which is basically half the battery so you know if you were buying a z ser <laughs> z series um, unicycle you have to know about that but the z10 is also really good in its build quality because the batteries are pretty much sealed there's no water ingress possible there and it also has a good bms and even if one battery unit would fail the other one is still able to uh, power the electric unicycle but it also has some downsides mainly and i think that's also why it was frying so much the voltage is really low so you know most wheels today are either 84 volt or 100 volt but the 9 z10 peak voltage is just 58 volts so it's a lot less um, volts so which means that you need more amps to push for example a higher top speed and the more volts you have the more batteries in series the more power you can also achieve on your wheel so this is really really a low voltage wheel especially in today's standards but with that said i gotta say that if i'm on a meeting uh, wheel meeting and there's a z10 and you know a bunch of other wheels it's probably the z10 that i would ask to to take a ride on because it's just so different in its riding characteristic the the fat tire has a lot of grip it's really really grippy and you can really just you know carve left and right and it's so zippy it's it's really insane uh, like the difference is that for example if you ride on a, a tire that is more narrow uh, you actively tilt the unicycle to go in its into a certain direction and here the z10 stays upright hopefully you can see it on the um, videos that i've recorded here
but on the flip side, it's the most train tracking and potentially also the most dangerous wheel, especially when going at high speed. Because what happens is if you have an uneven surface, so the road is, for example, a bit sideways or I know the sidewalk is going down on one spot, then the Z10 will also tilt and forcing you to go down. You have to actively fight it <laughs> to, to keep going straight. So especially on the bad road surfaces, on pavement, off-road as well, it's really tricky to steer the uh, Z10 and I would say that's it's pretty dangerous in this regard it's like way safer to go on an MCM5 or another wheel in such a bad road condition but on the flip side again there's a lot of flip sides this tire has a lot of grip so I feel very very secure when car carving on the Z10 and also if you're going through mud potentially also like a bit of sand uh, this tire gives you a lot of grip and I'm saying a lot of grip uh, we were going here with the S18 and the Z10 on really hardcore off-roading paths with like muddy trails and the Z10 just has, has loads of grip. Even though, you know, I got steered off a bunch of times and I had to fight it, all in all I would say it's, pretty, it's a pretty good experience. I wouldn't say it's a great off-roading wheel because the foot plates are just very low to the ground and it's easy to like hit a branch or hit something uh, uh, on the path. But in terms of just grip, it's, it's pretty great, actually. So in total, I have to say that I love the ride of the Z10 and probably I wouldn't advise it as your only wheel because it's more of, more of a like Sunday wheel. You, you want to just ride it when you really want to ride it. And after, you know, 15, 20 kilometers of riding, you'll be really tired because it just goes where it wants to. And then you have to be like, okay, uh, fine, I guess we go here. And it's a combination of having your wheel, your legs really tight, but also loose at the same time. It's weird to say because you have to keep it loose so it steers off a bit uh, when the road is uneven, like like here. You know, it's just working its way. And if if I can, if I hold it tight, then, then then I just steer off in different directions. So I have to keep it a bit loose so it has a bit of working power, but I also have to grab it to to turn, which is. You know, it's, it's a learning curve. If you even learned to ride on a lot of wheels, I think the Z10 will be, at least at first, a challenge for you. It's definitely, I would say, like a Sunday wheel or, you know, just a wheel you want to ride when you just want to ride, not when you want to go fast, not when you want to go just from point A to point B, because you actively need to concentrate a lot more. And it's also more dangerous because of this tire, especially at higher speeds, but it's also mo more fun. <laughs> and at slow speeds, it's very nimble. Oh. oh yeah, low profile tire. It's very hard and the max pressure is 32 PSI. If you go like 22, 23, it's very possible to hit the rim. So yeah, you have to go like 25, 28. And then the, the comfort is like really poor compared to electric unicycles, 18 inch electric unicycles with tube tires and more rubber. It also feels very like, you feel every imperfection on the road. <laughs> it's not comfy at all. Oh, one more thing is the valve access is also really tricky because the tire is so low profile and it's so close to the outer shell. Um, you, there's actually like a hole on the side where you need to put 
pump inside or the hose and it's, it's best to use a air pump extender there to just pump it up so that's tricky as well but back to the build quality i have to say that uh it's very tightly assembled it's also very sturdy it's pretty heavy i think at 26 kilograms and with this pad or battery size that's really heavy actually even in today's standards uh, but it's built like a tank like if you have a hard enough fall yes you can damage it but it's actually really sturdy and i love that it also have, has a kickstand in form of the real trolley handle now you can also make it look a bit more sleek and sexy uh, by detaching this um, trolley handle and mud guard but you better keep it on so you have no mud spraying on your back and a trolley handle which is pretty pretty helpful but if you really want it you can detach both of those and look really badass so i think that's sums up my uh, z10 review my z10 impressions i really like to ride the z10 it's a lot of fun but it's also really straining and i wouldn't consider it really safe in in day-to-day -day use especially at higher speeds and i think that most of the people that love the z10 at some point switch to a bigoti or a king song uh, because of the better performance and bigger range and maybe a bit more oh, 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 oh a bit more safety Ugh, especially in those turns <laughs> also top speed i forgot to say about top speed i think it's 45 uh, with stuff stock firmware maybe 50 i don't know but i also had the russian software installed uh, on the Z10 and then I went uh, 55 just did it once <laughs> I will not do it again because it's pretty pretty dangerous to go that fast on a 52 or I mean 58 old wheel okay so with that said uh, if you're still here leave a like on the video oh subscribe to see more content like this and I'll see you in the next video see you soon